Hey guys, it's Larsen here. I've had a lot of requests on how do you make a good Stormbrand Assassin feel good on mapping, but I cannot afford a Headhunter. How much does it cost? What do I need to do to make it feel good? Um, I've, I've, taken my, uh, <laughs> I've taken my time to see what I would do, what I could do with a budget of around 30 Exalted Orbs when I made this video. Uh, could you do it for less? Possibly, but this is what I spent on the build to make it feel really good for mapping. I will tell you this is not a character that is strong for bosses. You could maybe do it, but you're gonna die at least a few times using subsequent portals and it's better to have a separate character for bossing, because if you have this character you can do maps really really quickly. And if you farm for a day or two, you can afford a badass buster as a second character. But let's jump straight into it. First of all, I'm just quickly gonna show what is a brand. Put a brand on the ground. When you pick them on the talent tree, you can have to five brands. They attach to enemies and they go around and kill them. What makes this build super strong is we stack brand attachment range on our cluster jewels so they can jump really really far and we also empower our brand recall giving it more attachment range. So our goal with this build is to kill everything before it gets within our reach. Um, that, is, uh, that is the point of this build. And then we have a few items like it's gonna make it feel really fast. We have a Bisco Sleaze for Rampage. And since we can't afford a headhunter, we also included a inspired learning, which will help us when we kill rare monsters to steal their modifiers and sometimes get the speed boost. I'm gonna jump into the POB. This is what the tree looks like. The POB will of course, of course, be included under in the uh, in the in the comment space below. I'll link a link to the POB and all that stuff. So what do I think is an absolutely must-have to make this build feel good? Well, obviously, I can start with the cluster jewel. You need two large cluster jewels and four medium cluster jewels. The biggest and most important thing about the cluster jewels is the node called Blast Freeze. And it makes so freezes you and split spread to other enemies within a radius of 12. Especially when you're doing things like Ultimatum, that comes in very, very handy and offers up an awesome defense. And these cluster jewels brand loyalty, brand design, we have three of. And they just helps us with the brand duration, which can be pretty annoying. And a brand attachment range. So if you don't have the cluster jewels, you're leveling up early. Brand actually feels really, really bad until you get your cluster jewels going. Both large and medium. Um, that's it for the cluster jewels. They're, they're like a must have. And when you're leveling, I would recommend not using swift brand because you just don't have enough brand duration until you start picking up nodes. Let's quickly look at our items. We're using two white batteries. We're using a plus one power charge Alpha's Howl. We're using Impulses. We're using Storm Gives. We're using a rare boots with life, movement speed, resist. We're using an infield one amulet, two call of the Brotherhoods, the Bisco Leash. Um, pretty standard flask, you know, a life flask, a movement speed flask, crit flask of warding, a Y soak, and a Cinder Swallow. If you want to go into buzzing, I don't recommend doing it on this build. You can change this out for a series flask. And for the jewels, we have a elegant hubris because it is a pain in the butt to figure out stats without a headhunter. And with this, you just ignore all this stat attributes and it makes your life easier. The pantheons are really important. I use Soul of Arakari, where I capture all the souls and the same for Soul of Aberrath. My skills right now is, um, this is the most important. If you don't have this, you're missing out. Whenever I die, I cast a portal and I never have to do a walk of shame because you do die a lot. We're playing a very squishy build. And let's say you put in long hours, or you come home from work, you're a little bit tired. If you're not paying a lot of attention, you can definitely die. This is not a deathless build, but you can do maps really, really fast. I have a steel skin. It's just I put it on my move bar here. I have a one thing steel skin. If it helps, it helps. It's not really necessary, but I have it. Stormbrand. This is very standard. We're running Stormbrand, Inspiration, Kong Effect, Power Charge, and Kid Control, Shock, and Swift Band. We have a Arcane Surge, Second Wind, Flame Dash. Brand Recall, I'm running with Empower, Second Wind, and Enhance. Just to give that extra brand attachment um, brand attachment range. Which is, you know, whenever you get near some things, you click that and it just jumps and kills things really far away. And our Hydra Spear, we're running with Hex Touch, Respite, and Calling Strike. This thing is kind of, you know, you can run that, you can run Increased OE, you can kind of do whatever. Calling Strike is just because you have a lack of a better thing to put in, whatever. And for Auras, I'm running Sila Tree and Lightning Level 4. If you cannot afford an Lightning Level 4, you should use maybe... Hero of, uh, uh, Hero of Thunder instead of Hatred or Sealer Tree. It doesn't really matter. Whatever the sockets are, your colors, you can uh, you can use the Hero of, uh, Hero of uh, Thunder instead of one of these Auras and it will help a little bit with mana. Because we don't have that much of it. 
We have 82 on reserve, which is enough for mapping as long as you click your center swallow flask. Um, in the calculations, I just want to show we haven't really done anything super cheesy. We have power charges. We have conk effect from cedar tree. They're chill. Seating doesn't do anything. I don't know why that's taking a mere conk effect. And we have two plants attached to the enemy, uh, which is normal for passing red. So we're, all the conks here are fine. We have 2.7k life and 3 million damage, which is uh, really good for mapping. I have included notes to my build where I've linked trades to every single item and the prices of making this video. And when I added all these ups, it was a little bit less than 30 exalted orbs, but I just put it up in case the prices uh, differ a little bit within the next few days. So I hope this can be helpful if you go into the notes. And now I want to jump into the game. I have prepared a tier 16 beach map and a tier 16 atoll map. It's two maps I run a lot and you know, it's just they're not super difficult they're not Just super easy we rolled them i have sections on both zones so you'll get to see what a juiced up map looks like let's just start with the beach and we'll get straight into it Low on mana. that's something you're gonna hear a lot until you start killing things <laughs> what it is what it is Will this be hey we gotta protect the altar that's really good Night's madness drains away all hope. So our defense is that we kill, we freeze things, and we just gotta run away from people. That's honestly our best bet. If we get hit with this build, we're, we're in a bad spot. But um, we have so far reach, right? Your and we freeze uh, most enemies as soon as our bands get in contact with them. So our goal here is basically just to run around and hopefully not get hit. If we get hit, well, Room. you're not Hides running enough. Or you're getting too close to the enemies. You will fall to ruin. I think it's a really good build to do ultimatums with, as long as it's not standing in the stone circles. Whenever I see those, I am instantly gone. <laughs> I'm like, yep, better move on to next map. But having facing, having rampage, having inspired learning ruin makes this build feel really good. Those uh, three items together makes you move fast. You can run straight to the enemies and, you know, we do have Keeping 15 inspired learning buffs, right? So that's pretty good. I'm not going to loot everything here. Just because I want to showcase this video to you guys. How I run through the maps. As you can see, the brands are just jumping around. And we can just keep moving. We never really have to stop. I click my brand recall on cooldown. And whenever I don't have a brand recall up, I just click a few brands, right? I click a few brands, brand recall, and it's kind of like a rhythm. And they take care of everything else. Unceasingly and unchanging for countless lifetimes. Alright, time to move on to the bus. So a lot of map clearing builds don't have good bus damage, but I wouldn't say that's the case with this build. We absolutely melt tier 16 buses. And we're on a waking of link 9. No tricks here. And let's just move on to Atoll. I want to show you two maps that I like running that you might be running too. We have awesome map clear and we have awesome bus clear and it's a really solid map, right? It's a little bit too squishy for doing buses, but that's not the, what this build is made for. It's made for you to go into maps. And farm a lot of currencies and you know if you really care about busing if you play one full day of this or two you can definitely afford a buser right or you can just pay for people to do your buses that's another option if you're lazy you don't want to make a character i for example offer a service yo if you have a cyrus 8 we can spread the loot of something good up so you have a cyrus 9 or you know some people just take 30 or 50 c for it so if you don't want to have a bus and you just want to do maps really fast you know, this is a pretty good character to use find me first head on to run. The entry is 30 exalted orbs, but I want to make a build that feels good and not a build that feels breath. cheap, right? I want to have a build that's going to feel really good for you and you're going to go in and absolutely crush the maps. Could you do it cheaper? I wouldn't. I would not have a build like this without having it feel awesome for you guys. And that's why I set a realistic bar, right? If I took out some of the aspects and I said, hey, you can make this for 15, there's no way it would feel half as good as this. Hey, I got a hideout. I don't really care. But um, that's uh, that's pretty much going to sum up this video. Um, I made this character. Everything I have equipped right now is going to cost you 30 exalted orbs or maybe a little bit less. I made sure the prices were high. If you think this is fun, leave a thumbs up. Um, I'm going to leave a link to the description down below. I'm going to link a, link a link to my Twitch channel, a link to my Discord. And if you want to see more build guides, I'm going to make... You know other skills 
I'm gonna go in depth currency farming guides for uh, the video I released yesterday. If you haven't seen it, I released a video of how I found the mirror in two days using uh, well this build just with a head under. But the head under is not much faster. Bisco released with rampage is actually really really cool. And you know if you want to stay tuned for a small fun stuff called gaming, please um, please comment, please like, please subscribe, and guys I'll see you on the next one. If you like this video, comment tell me. Uh, it's awesome. Bye bye.